Thank you for being with us today. We would love to have you join us in person. To partner with us or to give online, go to www.upperroomohio.com. We hope you enjoy this message. Oh, how many had a good Christmas? Yeah, yeah good to see the Hefcocks back and some others and Maudi from Mexico. He was there way too long. So we're, and, and so many of you others, so thanks for being here. Um, we've missed you. We know there's a lot of travels. We have a pretty young church. So come holidays around here, it's, it's pretty intermittent. <laughs> so uh, it's great. So we're glad to uh, just have some people back. We know there's still a lot traveling and some, some illness going around. We just cancel the enemy's assignment, cancel the works of the enemy in Jesus' name. We know there were some people that went to the hospital this week, some flu bugs, just, just some nastiness and probably just needs to go back to hell where it belongs. So illness does not belong in the kingdom's people. All right, Nicole... Um, she, she alluded to just basically celebrating 2018, and we've let you in on our story a little bit, and for us, uh, 2018, the last quarter, was probably the hardest season uh, that we've went through without like an actual tragedy, and, and, and one of the things that we did this past week is we sat down at the dinner table, and Nicole pulled out her phone, and we went through starting January 1, day by day, and thanked the Lord for everything that happened that day. And we went through all of our trips, all of our ministry travels, all of uh, celebrating Chloe getting a huge art award in the state of Ohio. Only a few students got this award for a piece that she did. So we got to go to the state building, and, and she was recognized by, by the state in her art uh, piece. So anyway, we went through, and we just recognized, and we began to celebrate and thank the Lord for everything in, 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 this, in this realm of 2018. And, and today, really what we're going to go for is is basically reflecting and celebrating what the Lord did in 2018. And, and I'll just be honest with you. I know many of you, don't know all of you, but it, it was a hard year for some of you. It was a hard year. There was lost loved ones, lost jobs. You know, there was things. There was tragedy. There was relational tensions and just different things. And I, I just believe that it is setting up something great for 2019. We went into the year saying that 2018 was going to be a year of breakthrough, all caps through. And what I went back through, I reflected this week and went through all the messages I preached here this year. And um, I have like 450 messages on my Evernote app. I'm like, whoa, I've preached a lot of sermons. So I went back through and I'm scrolling through all of them. And what I realized was I preached more on transition than I did breakthrough. So somewhere nestled between broke down and brokenness and breakdowns and breakthrough is this place called transition. And, and I preached this message on three generations. And going back to Genesis, uh, actually, let's go with Matthew 22, 32. It says this. It says, I am the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. So he is the God of the living, not the dead. Yeah. And, and there's this place that's nestled between brokenness and breakdowns and broken uh, things and breakthrough. And it's this thing called transition. Well, these three generations, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, really reflect that he is the God of yesterday, today, and forever. The Bible says that he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. We've talked about Revelation 4, where all the angels, the four living creatures, the, the cherubim, the seraphim, are all singing the same song over and over for eternity, and it never gets old. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, who was, who is, and is to come. I get to this place in the year and I get really excited because here's what I get to do. I get to honor and appreciate my past. I get to value and, and, and sit here and value and, and be thankful for where I am, but look forward to and dream where I'm going. And that's, that's really what today is and going into the next couple days is I get to reflect and celebrate and honor all the stuff we went through in 2018, good, bad, and really ugly. I get to appreciate where it's got me to and where I am right now, but I get to look forward to where I'm going next year. I get to look forward to my future. I get to look forward to, to Jeremiah 29, 11, plans to prosper me, a hope for me, a future, good plans for me. And he's got the same plans for you, greater plans than you could ask, think, or imagine. We're excited that next, next week we release the Vision 19 and the Vision for Upper Room for next year and, and really been leaning into this and, and what that looks like. But, but we're going to be passing out these note cards. 
And we want you to write down your dreams, your visions for next year. And we want to partner with them because we're family. We're not just a membership group or, or, or a church or an organization or a business. Like we're a group of people called his bride. We're a beautiful family that's part of the kingdom. And we want to partner with your dreams and see your dreams come to life. See your dreams come to pass. See your dreams come to fruition. And that's what we're really excited for. But I don't want to end the year not being thankful for what actually happened. There's this, there's this point of, of, of the stuff we go through, and there's this point of, of the things we go through. And, and I'm not saying God caused them, but I'm not saying God won't use them. You, you see, God doesn't cause cancer. He doesn't cause these tragedies. If it doesn't in he- happen in heaven, and he, and he can't really gift it. He's the giver of life. If it's, cancer's not in heaven, he doesn't give cancer just to see how you'll deal with it. That, that's not a good father. That's, that's not a savior. That's not a creator, you know? That's, that's something evil and terrible, but what, we, what the enemy meant for destruction, Genesis 50, 20, what the enemy meant for destruction, God will use for good. Amen. And that's, that's where we are right now. So, so I, I, I found myself at the end of this year forgetting how I started it. In first service, Nicole, she said, reflect on a time where, where you were in a mess or, or you were in a hard time and you realized Jesus is with you. In that first service, then, then I realized at that moment, back to this time where I'm on a ladder and, and we've let you know that, that our house situation and it's funny how the Lord used this in us. We left a home, and, and it's not, it wasn't about a home. It's not about a house. It's not about a building or what we live in or, or the structure. It was about a home that was an atmosphere that we loved. And we transitioned to a project and live in a mess. And, and, it, and it really affected who we were and, and what, what happened in our hearts. And, and it began to allow us to search ourselves out. And we were stripped away so that I believe in 19 we can be built back up. And, and here's, here's the thing. I found myself on a ladder at one point, and I found myself, this was just after we killed a snake, five mice, moles, I mean, trapping raccoons. It, it, was, it was kind of at the epitome of this thing, and my family was moving in in two days. And I was there alone. It was three or four in the morning, and I'm just I'm painting or doing something up on a ladder. And this song called Here Again by Elevation Worship comes on. And I'll be honest with you, I don't like the verse or even the chorus. I only like the bridge of this song. <laughs> but here's what it said, and I, would re- I, would, I, I got down from the ladder because I just had to praise God, and I just had to just, just lean my heart into the Father. And here's the lyrics that began to penetrate me, and that was the moment Nicole asked first service that I think back to when Jesus was actually there. And here's what it, it, it came back, and, and it brought me to this place, and I looked up these lyrics, and it says, Not for a minute was I forsaken. The Lord is in this place. The Lord is in this place. Come, Holy Spirit, dry bones awaken. The Lord is in this place. The Lord is in this place. Let let me say that again. So as I was at the bottom for me, as I was at the pit of my year, as I was at honestly the lowest point and the most dependency on God and the most raw place that I've been, maybe in my lifetime, this is the song that penetrated my heart. And the Lord was reminding me I'm in this place. And he says this, for not for a minute were you forsaken. The Lord is in this place. The Lord is in this place. Come, Holy Spirit, dry bones awaken. The Lord is in this place. The Lord is in this place. Even when you think like you're alone, even when you think that no one else has went through what you've went through, even when the most tragic thing could happen, there's people sitting in this room that tragedies happen. But I found it fitting to sit here and realize this morning that we're ending the year the way I began my year. We went up to the toll residence, and Bruce and Catherine had us over for lunch, and we asked them this question at the lunch table. What's one thing that you guys are dreaming of for this year? What's one thing that you, that you want to come to pass this year? What's, what's something we can lean in and pray for you for? And Bruce and Catherine, who the prior year just lost a son tragically, unexpectedly, said, we want to have hearts of thankfulness. We want to be full of hope and full of thankfulness and full of, of realization and knowing how good God really is. I, I've been through a few tragedies in, in, in my life, and, and I'll be honest with you, one of them was losing my mom. She died of cancer, and it, and it was a big surprise to us because we're a church that believes in healing, a church that believes that God can heal and eradicate cancer. We believe it. If it's in his word and he says, and he is who he says he is, then he can heal things. He can heal disease. He can heal sickness. He can heal blind eyes. He can raise the dead, deaf ears. It's nothing for him, right? So this, this was the thing, and the, the, that tragedy led to something. Listen, I'm telling you this right now, that your tragedies, your circumstances, your rough le- years actually lead to something that's building you up for something greater that's coming. All things work to the good to those who love God and who are what? Called according to his purpose. 
God doesn't cause these things to happen. He doesn't punish us. He doesn't try to, try to say, hey, let's just mess with Aaron and see what he does with it. Like, that's not the heart of the father. But when these things happen, so, so my mom's thing, it led, actually, I grew in faith. It was tragic. It was hard to go through. But I grew in faith, and I grew through a passion to want to see cancer healed, to want to see dead people raised, to want to see disease healed. It led to a faith, an increased faith of healing. When we went through Drew's death, who, who, Drew and Christy, just a beautiful family with Christopher now and their new baby girl. But when, when, when Christy and Emmaus survived the wreck that Drew didn't, who was a leader here, in his young 20s, passes away, leaving church on the interstate. That led to something in me. It was the most tragic thing our church had went through until a few years prior when my mom died. But it led to something. It led to growth in the way of community. I'll be honest with you. With me personally, it allowed me to fall in love with being a pastor of Upper Room. It allowed me to realize, oh, no, we're here, and it's the right place, and it's the right time, and I love it. Before that, I, I didn't know if I was the right person for here. I, I was fighting insecurities and wondering, you know, I, I, are we the right ones for Upper Room? Are we the right pastors? Are we carrying what the Lord wants to do here in this region through this place? You know, I'm wondering that. And then all of a sudden, this tragedy led to victory. And this tragedy led to life, and it led to something, and it birthed something. Sometimes you don't know what you have until you need it. Sometimes you don't know the community that you have or the family that you have or the support or the love that you have until you actually need it. And that was where rubber met the road. And we as a church needed that. Christy and Emmaus as a family needed that. And all of a sudden, something was birthed. I, I found myself a couple years ago going into a fire and getting there just a little late and couldn't rescue a baby that died in a burning building. It led to something. See, some of our greatest tragedies, some of our greatest heartaches are our greatest growth seasons. And I don't know what you've been through, and I don't know what you're going through, and I don't know what 2018 looked like. It may have been tragic. It may have been bad. It may have been a year of transition. It may have been a year of heartache. It may have been a great year. But I love Nick and Tiana. We were in a marriage class with them once, and, and they said, what, where's your marriage, and what do you want out of this? And it was a very open, vulnerable class. And Nick says, we have a great marriage, but great can always get better. And I held on to that word. So I don't know where your year is, and I don't know where it's been, but when I faced this tragedy trying to save a baby that I couldn't save and, and getting burnt and having my gear ripped and, and being pulled out of that fire, listen, I learned something, and I grew in something. I flashed back to the time where we ended up going on a defensive fire, which means we just sprayed water from the outside while this baby's still inside. And I flashed back to in my mouth saying, God, you're good. God, you're amazing. You're so good, Lord. And I remember worshiping him. Him, knowing the circumstance was absolutely terrible, tragic. Now, this is the firefighter, not the family having to go through this. Imagine that. Imagine them. I can't even put my place there because even me as a rescuer faced this tragedy and faced this, this issue and faced this heartache for weeks, months, still years sometimes. But I began to worship and I began to learn that my circumstance and my issues and my tragedies don't define the goodness and integrity of God. Why? Because he's always good. 2018, we come to this house and it's crazy. <laughs> it's so crazy, but it's beautiful and it's amazing. And a couple of weeks ago, the Lord began to remind me, he said, quit being a baby. <laughs> That's exactly what you want to hear from God. But sometimes you need a, just a good swift kick in the butt, right? He's like, quit whining like a baby. If, you, if you're going to complain from the valley, you're always going to stay in the valley. He said, start praising and thanking me from the mountaintop. So I got on the mountaintop so I could see from a different perspective. And I began to see a creek that my kids are playing in and woods that they're tromping through and chickens that they're feeding and, and our third bat this week that we caught just in a few days. <laughs> We're deciding to have fun with it. There's a bat trapped in our wall right now and it's just screeching, keeping us up through the night. We named him Buddy. Buddy the bat. We're like, is Buddy still alive? And Nicole's like, oh, he's alive and screeching. We're having fun with this. Like, what was tragedy and what was hard for us and what was hardship for us and what might be the hardest thing that you've went through this year. I see people sitting in here, and, and the last couple years have been hard. I'm here to tell you that the season is changing, and the season of warfare has to be over because the season of joyfare is here. Look, Song of Solomon, Song of Songs, let's go there. It says this, Song of Songs says this, 
verse 2, verses 11 through 13. Chapters 2, verses 11 through 13. It says, look, the winter is past and the rains are over and gone. The flowers are springing up. The season of singing birds has come. How many were excited to wake up to sunshine this morning hearing some birds singing praise to Jesus? <laughs> Woo! I was. How many are glad winter solstice is over and we're on this side of days getting longer? Hallelujah! Says this, and the turtle doves fill the air. The fig trees are forming young fruit, and the fragrant grapevines are blossoming. Rise up, my darling. Come away with me, my fair one. Listen, I'm, I'm here to tell you that we live in a land of four seasons. As much as I hate winter, I know the importance of winter. It's like if you were a farmer, sometimes the droughts, as long as they're short, do really good for the crops because it allows the roots to grow down deeper looking for that rain. Then all of a sudden, if another drought comes, the roots are already deep, and they go where the moisture is. And if a, and if a, a big, I call it a golly washer, comes through, where the rain that doesn't even stay on the surface, and it just runs through, it comes and collects at the bottom where those roots dug down. It's the same principle with winter. Winter stinks in Ohio. I like two weeks of, of snow, and it has to be at Christmas time, and then one more two-day snow so I can go skiing. Other than that, let's go to spring, let's have some fun in the summer, and then let's hunt and watch football in the fall. Can I get some amens on that one? And if you don't hunt, we're sorry, we'll hunt the food for you that you might eat. If you're a vegetarian like Rachel, we'll pray for you for salvation. <laughs> Just kidding, I have to mess with Rachel at least once a month, it's in my contract. And she's not even here to defend herself today. So, but here's the deal. The winter is this key season of the four seasons in Ohio, and it's where all the nutrients, and it's where all the, 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 the ground gets all of its nitrogen and everything. Why? Because in autumn, some things happen. Leaves fell, grass died, and all these things get back into the ground to create a soil that's full of nitrogen and fertilizer and these, this ecosystem that's needed. The other thing that happens is the ground freezes and falls, and it does this. And all of those seeds and all of those nuts and all of those things that dropped into the ground work their way down into the soil so that in the spring they can actually bloom up and pop out and that will produce fruit. See, it's in our hardest seasons. It's in those winter times. It's in those droughts where we actually grow the most. David wouldn't have been able to hold the crown on his head in Zion and rule and reign if he had not went through the training seasons. See, David, he was training to, to slay a bear and a, and a lion to that way he could slay the giant. And slaying the giant was actually preparing him to, to, to figure out how to deal with Saul, who was trying to murder him and his family. See, but here's the thing. There was a consistent in David's life, and those things were building fortitude and character and perseverance. They were building something in him so that when the crown came, he could rule and reign in Zion. David, who even made a mistake when kings should be at war, he was looking and eyeballing a female on another rooftop who was bathing. He was a guy that made mistakes, but there was two consistents in David's life that I admire, a life of honor and a life of worship. No matter how good or bad things were, guess what? He was comfortable in his own armor, and he was comfortable to honor and worship. Listen, he didn't need the king's armor. He had his own armor. He has his own identity. He knew who he was, and he knew he just had a slingshot that he was supposed to use. So many of us, we want to look at somebody else and be like that person or do this. Or, man, if they were going through this season, they'd do this. Like, God is calling you to fight your own battle, and he's giving you all the grace that's sufficient for you to do it. You don't have to be like me. You don't have to be like a Micah or a Steve or a Josh or, or any of these other great people that we look up to. Like, like, he's calling you to be you. For one thing, everybody else is taken. He needs these different sauces. He needs these different varieties. He needs you to be you, and he needs you to fight the battle with your armor. Guess what? All the season leading up to that has prepared you for such a time as this. No, let me move on. Nicole had this word, and she alluded to it, but I want to read it. We, we, she texts this to a friend, a dear friend, and it says this, and I just felt the need. I asked her to go speak with me today. She said no because she already committed to Samuel Pierce that she would teach in the kids' class today. I was like, but baby, just five minutes. Just say your word for five minutes. Get a cover for five. She's like, I can't. I made a commitment. My wife is very pure, and she keeps her word. So I'll read her word for her. I feel led to share the word God gave me a few days ago with you. I was praying. This is Nicole texting somebody. I was praying about the end of the year and into next year, and the Lord really pressed me to spend time celebrating this past year. For me, there are a lot of things about this past year I just want to forget. But even in the bad and ugly, God is inviting me to celebrate. It was and continues to be part of this beautiful thing that is unfolding. 
And I feel that part of the celebrating is setting me up for what's to come in 2019. So I just declare that celebrating of what has happened and what you've walked through and currently walking through is breaking off things and breaking through things for what's to come. Listen, the things that we go through, the things that, that, that we have to persevere through and the things that we have to count it all joy in are the things that are building us up to actually receive the crown of our breakthrough that's to come. I, we declared 2018 would be a year of breakthrough. Here's what I think. I think the past, we've gathered some firewood. I believe God started the fire. Now it's time to fan it. I believe this. I believe that it was actually a transition year to set us up for even greater breakthrough. That's, that's what I'm feeling. I believe there was breakthrough, and I'm telling you, it's the thing is, you just don't see it yet. So I believe next year is the year for the fruit of the breakthrough. Does that make any sense? Like, like, I believe that it was a transition year, and the breakthrough is there, but we just can't see it yet. Sometimes we're receiving things, and sometimes there's things there, and sometimes there's the seasons that we've went through, and there's, there's these, these, these issues that we've had to endure, or these, these circumstances that we've walked through, but then the fruit comes later. It's like sometimes you take that test, but you don't get the results for a while. Right? Anybody take registries or boards or things like that? Those are terrible. Every day that goes by, I think I failed that thing even worse. I hate that anticipation. That was back in the old days. You had to wait for the mail to come through when I took my paramedic registry about 17 years ago. And every day that went by, I thought I failed that thing. Now it's like computer results, you know, within a couple hours or even just a couple days at most. It's like... Sometimes the things that we go through in the year we went through, we don't realize the fruit until actually we're already, or we're already through it. Let, let, me, let me finish up where I've been with the tragedies and the hardships in our life. This hardship, the last quarter of our life and what, what, what it got us to, it wasn't that fact that the house was hard. I can take hard work. I can take sleepless nights. I can take a lot of energy and, and pouring it into something and sacrifice and, and doing things and operating on three hours of sleep for about three months. I can do that. But here's, here's where my hardship came was knowing that this was a promise from God, but yet it doesn't feel good. Knowing that this wasn't the plan, like, like knowing that he had promise and prophecy and, and, and plans for this, and then I walk in it, and all of a sudden it's not what I thought it was. It's not all that it was cracked up to be. It's not all what I anticipated, and it didn't feel like an upgrade. Like I feel like sometimes the promises for God, we automatically think it's going to be an upgrade, and it's going to be this thing. Well, well, sometimes they just come with a little hard work, a little perseverance, and seeing the way God's seeing that situation to actually build us up. So we get to this place, and, and honestly, coming through this now and seeing we had our family over for Christmas Eve, and it's just beautiful. It's such a fun house to decorate, and it's been such a fun project now that we look back. It's, it's kind of like somewhere nestled between that breakdown and breakdown or brokenness and that breakthroughs, that transition. It's like birth. That transition period in birth is right before the baby crowns and then begins to come out. That's the hardest time. That is the most difficult, painful time. But then all of a sudden, you birth that and you hold that and you hold that life and it was all worth it. Right, ladies? I, I can't come from experience on this one. But you hold that and then all of a sudden, it's like, wow, that was worth it. And you, you, you bring that baby close. And then a year or two goes by and it's like, oh, well, maybe we'll have another. It, it's like it's this precious thing that all that life and all that joy and all that work and all of that hardship and all that pain actually paid off because there was something in the end that was worth holding, that was worth embracing, that was worth journeying with, that was worth loving. And that's kind of where we are with this, is, is the season of hardship and the season of, of craziness and absolute insanity. Every night I come home to something with this house. One night I'm out there. Bring, lifting up the septic tank and I'm like it's all clogged all the water's coming back in the house quit take, turn off the showers and I'm out there and I'm calling the girls and I'm like did you guys put something down the toilets and I'm on the phone and Nicole's inside with them and, and I'm like huh. and I'm trying to figure this out did you guys do this did you do that did somebody slip something how much toilet paper did you use it's my girls I've got four daughters and they're notorious for You just use a half a roll. We're on a septic system now. Take it easy. So I'm out there, and I'm like, what's going on? And I'm calling my brother-in-law, who's a plumber. I was like, dude, it's all backed up. Flush the toilet, see if it comes out. Nicole, Nicole, flush the toilet. Nothing. And I'm seeing all kinds of stuff up in this thing. Corn and peanuts and...
Holy Spirit's still here, all right? <laughs> One of the funniest things that a youth, we were the youth pastors here for seven years, and uh, there's always these great stories. I'm on a rabbit trail right now, but I'll get back to it. <laughs> One of the funniest things, James was probably in the van at that time, and uh, somebody says, hey, do you think Jesus ever farted? <laughs> without hesitation, without a pause, another teenager answers this teenager's question and says, of course, where do you think the term holy crap comes from? <laughs> so come on, Jesus was a man. He dwelled among us. So anyway, I'm out there, and then all of a sudden, I'm like, Lord, take care of this. Now, this was the night after our well had a dysfunction and was backed up, and so now I'm out at the septic tank. I'm like, okay, rivers of living water will flow. Okay, now I'm this, and it's not flowing. So all of a sudden, it was like the Nile just came through this pipe, and I don't know how many hundreds of gallons came through, but I'm like, thank you, Jesus. I'm out. But anyway, this is, this is the point, and, and this is like where we've come in the last three months, and it's been this crazy journey. But then we begin to look back, and we begin to be thankful. And we begin to see, like, I've never been in the growth of this, and I, I talked about some of the other tragedies. The growth of this is I've never been more dependent on God in all of my life than through this three months. It's been this beautiful thing of being raw and being vulnerable and being in need. Like, I haven't had a need like this in years. And I'm needing God to intervene. I'm needing him to be my provision. I'm needing him to be my source of counsel, my prince of peace. I'm needing him to be these things in my life. I'm also needing people in my life more than I've ever needed people. And these random things are showing up and these random gifts and these people helping and meals and, and all this stuff, especially early on in this journey. And even lately, it's like, wow, Lord. And it's just this fresh piece of encouragement. It's like we are loved. Sometimes it just feels so good to be loved, doesn't it? So we're in this process of, of this, this brokenness, and we're in this process of this mess, but yet it's the greatest growth of our life. I'm dependent on God, and it feels so beautiful. I'm in need of God, and it feels so amazing. I'm so raw and humble now. I needed a big dose of humility. I'll be honest. I felt myself as I look back, like as you become a new, and then you look back who you used to be, like, yeah, I was, I was really arrogant. I was kind of a jerk. And now I'm like, man, this is so amazing. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for using this. Thank you, Lord, for cultivating this in my heart that I can be different. Thank you, Jesus. It's this beautiful thing of like seeing the old, appreciating where we're at, but also now looking forward to where we're going. I want to read and just end with a couple verses here. Let's just go to thankfulness. First Thessalonians says this. These are actually the three points of today says this, verse, chapter 5, verses 16 through 18. Switched it up on you guys back there a little bit. So starting in 16, rejoice always. Pray without ceasing. In everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. I, I want to get back to that, but James 1, 2 says, count it all joy the various trials you may go through. We get to Colossians, and it's talking about, in, in verse 17 even, uh, chapter 3, it says, And whatever you do or say, do it as a representative of Jesus, giving thanks through him to God the Father. In 1 Chronicles 16, 34, it says, Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, and his mercy endures, when? Forever. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is what? He's good. No matter the junk I'm going through, no matter the, the, the whining year I've been through, like, he's really good. I want to remind you what, what dear sister, just who I really value, Catherine, she said, your circumstances don't define the goodness and integrity of God. He's always good. Let me go back to Thessalonians here. Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, and everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Wow, rejoice always. When? When? Pray when? Always. Always. Pray without ceasing. Never stop praying. Never stop having your heart towards the Father. Never stop having your heart in communion and connection and commitment to the Father. Never stop that. You know, I, it's not that I always feel like giving thanks. I'm a positive person. I'm optimistic. But I don't always feel like worshiping. I don't always feel like praising as much as I don't always feel like working out. As much as I feel like always opening up my word. As much as I always feel like taking out the trash or delivering chicken feed to the chickens this morning in the mud, 
with my shoes on and trying not to get chicken poo on my shoes to come to church. I don't always feel like that. And guess what? The cats needed food today. I don't even like cats. They have one purpose in my life, kill mice. I don't always feel like this stuff. I don't always feel like praying. I don't always feel like rejoicing always or, 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 or praying without ceasing or, or worshiping him and giving him thanks. I don't always feel like it. But as Josh says, and, and, and he mentions this often, every relationship has passion, intimacy, and commitment. And sometimes when you don't have the passion and the intimacy, that's when we're left with commitment or covenant. And that's when it doesn't feel good. And that's when we don't feel like it. That's when we don't want to do it. We still do it. Why? Because we have a covenant. We have commitment. We have connection. I don't always feel like doing this, but guess what? I do it. And every single time afterwards, every single time, like working out, I always feel better. Every time I don't feel like praying, I just begin to turn my heart to the Father. Every time I don't feel like worshiping, I just edify him and lift him up and affirm him and adore him. Oh, wow. I feel ignited now. I feel amazing now. I feel so good. There's so much peace. Whoa. Did you guys feel that today in worship? Do you feel that all of a sudden just a blanket of peace comes through? And it's that time where, like, Brad was playing the guitar. I was like, man, I don't want to leave this spot right now. This is so amazing. There's something that's ushered into here right now. Here's what I want to do. I, I, the band can come, and I just want to leave you with this, this thought of thankfulness. And, and I, I just want to encourage you. To, to reflect on your year right now. What we're going to do is, if that's you with your spouse right now, or you journaling, or, or maybe you going through your calendar like we did, I'd love for you, just, just for a moment, we're going to allow and just cut out three to five minutes here, just of you to have that opportunity. Go through January. Go through your year. Go through the process that you've been through. And I just want us to turn our hearts towards thankfulness to the Father. Can we do that? So they're going to play. So if you need to get your phone out or a journal out or something, and just... Let's, let's begin to just turn our hearts to the Father of thankfulness, that we'll praise him from a mountain, we'll see the way he sees, and we'll see the circumstances the way he sees the circumstances. Guess what? They're not doom and gloom to him. They're actually full of hope. They're full of goodness. They're full of potential. They're full of future. That's Jeremiah 29, 11. He has a plan for you, a plan to prosper you, plans of a hope, plans of a future, a good future for each of us. As we end this year with thankfulness, I want to go into the next year with, with passion and expectancy and urgency that something good is happening. Something good is full of hope. Something good is just amazing. There's breakthrough. There's, there's abundance. There's favor. There's fruit in this next season. Like I, I know we kind of go this route every year, but every year it grows in me with anticipation. Every year it grows with me with a sense of expectancy that something great is happening. Why? Because every year it gets greater anyway. How many else are like that? Like every year of your marriage, every year with the Lord, every year, it's like, wow, life is just getting so much better. And I know there's setbacks, and I know some of you have faced major tragedy. But still, like, the Lord is always good. And the way we get to journey through that is always strengthened. So, so just for a moment here, we're going to just dim the lights down and give you that, that moment of just you and the Lord. Maybe you and your spouse and the Lord, or if your kids are with you, that's fine. But just in your own way, just, just turn a heart of thankfulness to the Father. And just sit here and reflect in 2018. It's our last time together. This is the last couple days of this year. And I believe it's marked. I believe it's marked with goodness. I believe it's marked with something that's leading to something greater. God, we just give you thanks. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you that the season is past, that, that 2018 is passing, and 2019 has such good hope, has such good plans, has, has such an expectancy for your power and your goodness and your mercy and your love, Jesus. So, Lord, as we sit here, let us reflect on your goodness, that, that you've never left us, you've never forsaken us, you've never abandoned us. People have, Lord, but you haven't. Things have let us down. People have let us down, Lord, but you never have. This whole year, you've been by our side. You've been advocating. You've been going on our behalf in intercession to the Father. So, Lord, let us reflect on this year. Let us just turn our hearts to you with thankfulness. Let us adore you in everything that happened, good and bad. But we thank you that it's producing fruit, that it's producing goodness, it's producing character, perseverance, Jesus.